Okay, I think this is our last main topic now, um, and quite an interesting one on optimization. So, what this is about is optimizing um, the constants in the gecko model to be able to um, do better against a set of data. Now, you've got a number of ways you can do that. A fairly basic way is to say, um, okay, I know the lift and drag of this, this wing section. I'm going to change my constants until I get about the right value. And then I'm going to use them from now on for later designs. But the beauty about Gecko is that these could be locally tuned. So how would you how would you go about that? If you have a certain type of geometry here, then you can go away and run an LES or um, or, or an SBES or whatever simulation and get um, good results. You can then run that steady state in Gecko and. As you can see, we'll take this example. We've massively overpredicted the flow separation here and the lack of recovery. So that's not going to be good. But we can take those um, data from the LES and use them to optimize a set of constants that are varying locally to get that. And it's done via a uh, a, a, a neural network to type training. Um, and so what you're able to do then is get this trained. And then you can use this um, train model for similar um, flows. So um, you can see in here that um, what you can do is, is take the um, for this particular case, you've got experimental data that you can also use within this process, and you can get um, a gecko default, which is not too bad, but then you can augment it with this training and really get a spot on solution there. So, this is all pretty new. I watched a one and a half hour lecture, I think, on how to set this up and do it. It's largely all done through the GUI. It's something that's being integrated into Fluent as a tool. And it's something that things like F1 teams are making use of already. So um, it is a significant um, methodology that we can have here. Um, finally, uh, an improvement to the adjoint solver is if you want to do anything, uh, optimize something with um, periodic structure, you can now tell the adjoint that it only needs to, uh, it can only deform these so that they remain periodic shapes. So obviously improving a fan geometry is no good if the nine blades, they're all different. So you can improve uh, based on that job geometry having to remain periodic. And the, um, the, the reach out flux algorithm, that this distance-based one that was introduced a while ago to improve um, pressure-velocity coupling is now moved forward into the adjunct solver. So that's regular fluent. Um, I've got a couple of exciting slides to show, though, on, on, on something that's actually uh, available now as a beta. So when you open up fluent, um, you'll see that um, Beta features is an option under the GUI, and I'll, I'll, I'll open up one in a second at the end to show you. Um, what, what comes up in that now is that there's a, a multi-GPU solver. So this is a new technology being developed to run on a GPU. Um, and at the moment, it can run across single or multiple deep GPUs with shared or distributed memory. Subsonic compressible flow, it can be ideal gas, material with constant properties. For turbulence, you can either have K, K epsilon or gecko. So, so um, gecko gives you a variety of models instantly. 
you can have um, conducting uh, solids and you can have porous media. So, you know, it, there's a reasonable amount of physics in it. Now, what's the idea is that you get the benefits of a GPU solver because you can run on hardware um, that's uh, cheaper to buy and lower power. So, so lots of um, companies are investing now and looking at the multi multiple GPU solutions and you get really strong scaling in it. I'm not um, up and familiar with all these different GPU um, uh, types, but you know you need you need a, a substantial GPU. This is not one that's just running the graphics on your laptop. But once you you get into those, you can have um, really quite amazing performance. So you've got one of these um, these GPUs here is is giving you an equivalent to 640 uh, uh, cores on five nodes, for example. So, and the parallel efficiency is really good. So watch this space that will be developed. It'll be more physics will go into it, obviously. At the moment, it's good for aerodynamic type simulations, heat transfer simulations. Um, there's no multi-phase, no chemistry or anything. But if we just flick back, it's really quite open here. So if you've got access to GPUs and you want to, um, give it a shot, then it's there and it's working. So that's my update for this year. Um, it's, it's, um, we've got 10 minutes left. I'm just going to use that 10 minutes to quickly bring up Fluent and um, just show you a couple of things that will that will show you where certain things are going. So. Um, I've opened it, but let me just do that again. It was too quick. This is the launcher. Um, this is where you show beta features. Um, and yeah, that's so what it tells you is you're just turning on beta features in the here, not on Influent. So depending on what you've got, if you've got a pro license, you just get Michigan solution. If you've got premium, you, you get the workflow for Aero. That's part of the premium solution and then if you show beta features you get an additional one here which is post analysis so this is a simplified um, uh, access if you like to insight at the moment it's really there to show you what's coming it's not something you can make big use of um, but it's something that you might want to have a look at I can quickly uh, start if you like and just show you what it's going to look like. So, you know, this this looks like fluent. Um, and if I if I read something in, read a data set. So I could bring in, I don't know those, so I can load them. So this is bringing in at the moment just an ordinary case, um, but um, yeah, don't, don't worry, my licenses are going to be replaced soon. It's, this happens to be just a bubble column that I've got um, that I'm working on. But you can see that here to do things, it's just like being influent. So I could do static pressure on a surface, I could do the wall. And display it. So at the moment, you say, well, why wouldn't I do that in Fluent? The answer is I could. But what it's going to allow us to do is to work through time step animation. It's going to allow you to bring multiple cases in to do um, case comparison. So um, that's, that's something on the way. Feel free to look at it to get a feel for what's coming, but don't judge it as a complete product because it's not. So let me, uh, I don't want to save a session file, I don't care. Um, let me open up Fluent again.
show beta features. Now let's quickly go through to enterprise. So if you've got an enterprise license, you get what we had before. You get FENSAP ICE, which has been here for a while now as a, um, a thing. You get that post-processing. You get this GPU-based solver. There's also um, some of um, Polyflow is in here as when it says material processing, that's some of the Polyflow models. And there is a Lattice Boltzmann code that um, Fluent, uh, sorry, Ansys have been playing with that's there as a beta too. Um, so if you want to open that GPU based one, um, let's just start it up and see what happens. I'll just drag it across again here. So this is looking very much like um, what you'd see anyway. Uh, you can bring in a case and data from a setup in Fluent, and that's probably the way you would use it at the moment. If it's got uh, stuff in that this doesn't support, it will tend to try and pull it out. Um, but you're probably best, if you want to try something out, set up the job in uh, standard Fluent, read it across here, and then you can give it a try. Um, obviously, make sure you've got a decent GPU to try it on. Um, but all of these tools have got the same look and feel about them. So I'll just I'll just quit out of that, and I'll just show you one more because um, I think one of the tools that we have at Ansys, which is um, woefully underused is is polyflow and the reason it's woefully underused is because it's not very pretty to use so if i start this up again bear with me we come in here and we can start doing stuff so we've got a limited set of things that we can do here um, because it's got different physics in, but then there's some wizards to set things up. Um, so first of all, I've got to specify a mesh, uh, so I'm not going to do it now, but um, what you can do in this is, is deal with viscoelastic fluids, um, extrusion, etc. So very, very powerful models, um, just not very nice GUI in native native polyflow so you can see here what the aim is when you've got um, what we're trying to do is consolidate all of these various tools in a very similar GUI and you'll have options when you launch fluent here to not only launch standard fluent but to launch some of these other tools as well 